welcome to the kennel. Uh, I'm Eva Maria and this is Jakob and these are the dogs. And they are our fantastic family members and they are our true unbelievable marathon runners in doggy shape. And they are our guest runners sometimes. I'm Eva Maria and we're living with our 19 Siberian Huskies. That's like our main thing that we do. First hand they are our family members and they do get to come inside the house whenever they choose to. Secondly they are our racing team and third hand they are our guest dogs. I'm Jakob, working full time like a carpenter, training dogs in free time. They are all very, I won't say well behaved, but uh, teenagers, you know? But they're all very cuddly and very nice. So you can come and meet them if you want to. So this is Bombo and Ghost. They are father and son. And they are crazy. They are very ADHD. They are very high energy. They're very fun to play with. They're very fun to work with. They are always very happy. They always eat their food. They are never really any problems in the pack. They are always friends with everyone but they're just very hyper. So they're a bit, ha a handful, I would say. <laughs> In the beginning, Eva Maria told me that maybe two of them were huskies, okay. And then it increased to four. And when we had four, she told me not more than 10. We have 19 Siberian huskies on the kennel today. A musher is the person that's driving the dog sled, that's communicating with the dogs where he wants to go, why and when. I wouldn't really say that he's the, the boss of the team, but he's a part of the team. And he's the person standing behind the sled, making sure that everything is safe and that everyone is safe. <laughs> I think I have a lot better connection with dogs than with humans. If I see 30 dogs, I can read every one of them. All of our dogs are born and raised inside the house. From the second they're born, they are inside. They are with us. They're not in the basement, they are in our bedroom. We spend all of our waking time with them. <coughs> Phoenix! Phoenix! Hey! Hey! Sluta! Man vill sova nu! And we touch them and we get them used to all of the different like the touching part, the cuddling part, putting them on their back and just rubbing their bellies and just enjoying life, learning that the human touch is something very positive, it's something good. That's our job to build a very stable foundation for them, making sure that they're ready for life. Compose is not born at this kennel. She is born at a completely normal, regular sled dog kennel. And that means that she's born in a house like that and she has her first human contact around, usually around 12 weeks of age. In our opinion, it's a bit too late. 
because they will get a bit like insecure, shy. They don't really know how to adapt to new humans, new persons. Yuna, she's born with people in the puppy box from the first second she's born. She's used to children of different ages. She's used to older people in wheelchairs. She's used to everything that she needs to be used to. So it's a very big difference between them. We don't do this as a tour camel at all. We do it because it's fun, it's a good way of getting the socialization bits for the dogs, getting them used to new people and they love it. But we have chosen to have that amount that we can take care of, that we can feed, that we can provide everything that's necessary for them to need. He wears his, his heart on the sleeve. Yeah. You can see in his eyes when he's yeah, it's like, oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> He's a very happy boy now! So we don't have 600 dogs, we don't have them on chains, we don't force them to run, we don't leave them outdoors in minus 30 degrees or pouring rain. Birka, she is the yes, lady on the kennel. She doesn't like when you say it hi. One guest said that out loud and she went into her house and she didn't come out. Oh. So she knows that word. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, you're very young. Very young in Turkey, yeah. Exactly. They eat about around 10,000 calories every day. So they eat a lot, but they run a lot. They can go for anything between 20 up to 120 kilometers runs every day. They have slim, lean muscles, exactly like a human marathoner. They are the athletes. They are the runners. They are the heroes. We need to just be their service team to make sure that they get the right food the right amount of food, the right harness, the right amount of training, the right amount of massaging, that they have really good veterinarian teams around them. We need to make sure that they have everything they need and more. So we are the slaves of the dogs. So calm when you're driving the sled. You really need to love what you're doing to be around your dogs because all of your free time you have from your work you spend with the dogs and all of your money you earn you spend to your dogs. <laughs> Are you my Uber driver? Yes. <laughs> yeah, the hardest part is to to find time for everything and money to finance everything. But then we make sure that we have a full-time job that someone can provide from outside the kennel and bring the money in. So the tours is a very, very, very small portion of, of the money coming in that we need, but we have chosen to not do more tours because we don't want to push more pressure on the dogs. We don't want to have them as the money makers. They're supposed to be doing it because they love it, they think it's fun.
Yeah, they are very expensive. You need to prioritize what you are spending your money on. We can have tear down broken jackets and pants and shoes that's leaking. It doesn't really matter as long as the dogs have what they need. That's 100% what comes first. And Dalvi, he's our clown. He's very social, he's very friendly, he's very cuddly. He has some very fun hobbies. He collects stuff like rocks or pieces of ice or sticks and usually puts them on top of his house and he's very proud of them. He really <laughs> enjoys watching horse jumping on the TV, that's his hobby to do. Uh, nothing else with horses, just jumping. Don't know why. It's very hard to try to sit on the sofa and watch TV with him because he will sit in your lap like a chihuahua. <laughs> Does the competition start now or you won last time? <laughs> We don't live off nature, we coexist with nature. Everything we take from nature, we need to give back to nature again. If I remove an animal, a life from the forest, I need to make sure that the rest of the animals are having life as well. We hunt, we pick berries, we grow vegetables. So we make all of our own like face creams and everything from the forest. I think we have a hard life in people's eyes, but we love what we're doing. If you like what you're doing, it's not hard. <laughs> That's all I got to say. It's a fantastic life. I, I don't feel that we have a hard life. Because when I wake up in the morning, I'm glad, I'm happy. How do you feel about the ongoing shortage of treats? Who do you think is going to be the next horse jumping Olympics winner? Uh huh. 
Okay, so everyone ready? One, two, 